Will the Washington Capitals continue their surge towards the playoffs? We'll discuss that against the they, as they play the Maple Leafs here today on Thursday night in the NHL. Guys, welcome in to Puck Time, powered by Wager Talk TV. I am Andrew McGinnis. We've got Carmine Bianco and Brian Leonard with me. To break down the Capitals, Leafs, we've got the Islanders, Panthers, and the Golden Knights taking on the Winnipeg Jets. Best bets at the end of the show. Of course, it's opening day. We've got the big dance going on. We cannot forget about hockey, guys. We're going to try and make you guys some money on the ice, and we'll start things off with the Florida Panthers and New York Islanders. Carm, you know this Islanders team, no matter what happens, they're not going to go out without a swing. You know, they're not going to go out without a fight. And Patrick Waugh is going to try and keep this team rolling. But right now, it's tough to play against this Florida Panthers team. Florida dropping that game to the Boston Bruins. What do you think about tonight's game? The Islanders, Panthers. Yeah, you know, um, I would love for the Islanders to have put up any kind of a fight of late. Andrew, they're just not doing it. Uh, you know, losing 4 nothing at home. Uh, to New Jersey off that win against the Winnipeg Jets where it looked like um, maybe they were going to rebound and start playing better. But this team, I, I just don't get it. Uh, they've now dropped, what is it, uh, um, seven of their last eight games. That's not a team that is going to make the playoffs. Am I concerned about Florida losing uh, five of the last six? Yes, I am. But I'm also looking at who they've played in those games. Uh, they played against uh, Carolina, Tampa Bay, Nashville, um, and we're going to talk about Nashville a little later on. The New York Rangers, the Boston Bruins, sandwiched in between was a win over the Flyers, who, again, also are in a playoff spot right now. So they're at least playing teams that are playoff bound. The the Islanders aren't. Uh, it's not even Sorokin in goal tonight. The goalies are confirmed for this one. It's it's uh, Varlamov for the Islanders. It's going to be Stolarts for the Panthers. And the Panthers play the same way in front of Stolarts as they do in front of Bobrovsky. So I never uh, really worry about that drop-off. Obviously, I would like to have Bobrovsky in goal, but it's going to be uh, Stolarts in, uh, in net tonight. <sighs> I just, I just don't see it from this Islanders team. It's tough for me to take plus 165 in the Islanders tonight, but I don't want to lay a dollar ninety-five. Maybe Brian has a different thought on how to approach this game. I'm going to take the over. It's something that I hate doing with with uh, with Panther games. But you look at some of their games, and uh, you know, four-three game against uh, against against the Boston Bruins. Prior to that, four-three game against the Rangers. Games that. Uh, and teams that normally play some very good defense, uh, five-three against uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, they're allowing some goals right now, so maybe it's a bit of hope if you're an Islanders fan that they can go in there and somehow steal tonight's game. But uh, Florida still has plenty to play for, and the Islanders are falling off. If you look at their prices to make the playoffs right now and, and their um, their percentage on both Money Puck and a couple of the other sites to make the playoffs, they're dropping off. Uh, you can get, I think you have to lay, uh, I think it's 220 or 240 on the Islanders uh, on the no proposition to uh to not make the playoffs uh that, that gives you a little bit of insight into what the books are thinking uh they're using up whatever games they have left there's not many games left uh it's a big hole for them to climb uh i think they're ready for the off season we'll see if that starts tonight or not but i'm going to take the over in this one and look for one of those five two type games that gets us the money brian yeah that's a tough game for me um, uh, similar thoughts to, to what you said, uh, over the last 10 games, five and five play, we find New York with a 47.92 goal share, expected goals, 47.66. The Islanders are three, six and one in those games. And as you mentioned, this club's on a one in seven run being outscored 32 to 15. And to that credit, they do have the last three days off before this trip to Florida to play uh, the Panthers and the lightning. So that may help them a little bit here, but. I don't want any part of the Panthers, though, either. The, the Panthers, over the last 10 and 5 on 5 play, uh, goal share 47.2, expected goals 43.72. That resulted in a 4, 5, and 1 mark. That's nothing like we saw earlier in the season for much of the entire season for Florida. They were a team that was dominating goal share, and they just haven't as of late. So neither team is playing well right now, and I really just don't trust Florida to lay this type of number right now. Got a big card today. I'll pass on this one. It's, we got better games to talk about. Where'd you go, Andrew? 
Andrew is frozen. If you had Andrew frozen minus 150, you cashed your ticket. He's usually making <laughs> well, that, fun of me and my muted mic. Andrew, that, that, and, well, that, he's on the East your, Coast. That's your free uh, space in the middle right there. One of us either freezes or we forget to turn off our mic or turn on our mic. He, he, either that or he looks real serious. He's got like the Charlie Sheen from Major League hairdo going there too with the little shave fade on the side or whatever. Um, let's let's hope they don't bring Andrew in for the eighth and ninth inning to protect a lead. But um, we'll get him back shortly. Brian, you know, you look at this and I get the days off for the for the Islanders. I just, at this point in the season, um, does it like even matter? I was trying to bring up a stat real quickly on him just to find out where the Islanders rank as far as um, uh, days off for, for uh, when they're on three days off. But I just, I just don't see how it helps them. So I'm looking at the Islanders and it looks like they've only played three times on three days of rest and they are um, two one in one this season. Um, but here's the, here's the big thing. Two one in one, they've been outscored. Uh, by three goals, uh, I know an average of three goals, 4.5 to one, uh, 1.5 in those three games that they've played two, one and one, um, or two and one for them. I just don't get it with this team. They look like they were coming along. They look like the, the new coach bump with Patrick Watt took a while to happen. And, and then they just tanked it. Um, you know, I had a preseason bet on them, plus, I think, plus 130 to make the playoffs. I know that's a dead bet now, unfortunately. Um, there's no way of getting out of that. Uh, you could. I could use, a, I could lay half a unit on them not to make the playoffs and sort of mitigate mm -hmm. uh, my losses. But, um, like, what's wrong with this team? Uh, this is a team that I thought had good defense. Uh, it, was it, do you think it's their scoring on this team that they just didn't have the scoring this season? Well, they, they haven't had the scoring, um, so that is a concern. But it's just a team that I just don't think is very good. Uh, I thought all season long they were a team that I wanted to play against, and um, it's worked out that way. Uh, I've had a pretty good record going on or against them. So they've played about as well as I thought uh, they would play. And right now you've got other teams uh, really peaking. Uh, we're going to talk about the Washington-Toronto game in a minute. And Washington is one of those teams that uh, has really been uh, coming on. Uh, I talked about that a little bit earlier, where they changed the lineup a little bit. They were a little heavier earlier, and now they're getting out and uh, being able to compete in that regard. So, um, yeah, I think this season's just about over for the Islanders, and they'll be playing out the uh, the rest of the year. But I do like to play on teams who are losing and not playing well when they do get extra days off. So we'll see what kind of effort we get out of them. All right. Speaking of teams that uh, are not losing right now, uh, and uh, one that you know has dropped three to five, it's the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Washington Capitals. Hopefully, we'll get Andrew back. They must have had a power failure there, in all honesty, because uh, he normally can log right back in. But you've got there the Leafs. Is. I think we've got him back. But we, we've got the Leafs open at minus 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 one eighty five. Uh, they're now 170, so some money on Washington coming in overnight. Washington plus 145 is a take back. Total here is six and a half, under 20. Uh, Joseph Wall confirmed for the Leafs as the, as the starting goalie tonight. It's likely going to be Lindgren in this one. Brian, I'll go to you, and then we'll get back to uh, Andrew after that. But uh, give me your thoughts on this one. Yeah, the Maple Leafs have won seven of the last eight meetings in this series. The last three, that combined 16 to 5 score. Last 10 games were five on five. Toronto's outplaying their advanced stats with a 63.04 goal share, but only a 50.39 expected goals. During that same, same time period, the Capitals have a 46.34 goal share, 48.26 expected goals. Those are poor numbers for a team like Washington, who has come in those last 10 games going 7 3 and 0. So they've been a little bit fortunate here in Washington. They are playing a lot better than they did earlier in the season. But uh, they're not playing as well as what that record would show. Um, Toronto's just 5-4-1 uh, with the better numbers, so they're playing a little bit better. Capitals have won 6-7 as of late, with the only loss coming to this Toronto team eight days ago. They lost that game 7-3. to three. And while they're coming in hot, Toronto's off back-to-back -back losses. Now, the spot calls for the Maple Leafs here, but I just can't get there in this price range. 
we simply have had a bad read on Toronto. I made a lot of money fading them early. Now I, it's one of those teams that regardless of who I pick, I lose. The last time uh, I played some hockey games the other day, I won with Washington. I won with Vegas in lucky style. But I, my loss was Toronto. And this is a team who has been a uh, pain in the ass to me. So I'm not going to get involved in this game, although I would expect Toronto to give a really good effort here. Yeah, uh, I, I get it, Brian. Uh, you know, they haven't uh, they haven't played well over the last six games, it looks like. Uh, four losses, one in regulation, a couple wins coming against the Oilers, and oddly enough, this Washington Capitals team in Washington, Andrew, 7-3. Uh, but that was a game, I think, in which, you know, Washington was coming back from the road trip, a very good road trip, and uh, I think the Leafs caught them in that game. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one? And welcome back to the show. Yeah, guys, sorry about that. Technology at its finest, doing what it does. Really quick, I want to say I do agree with what uh, you said there, Carmen, about the Florida game. I, I like the over as well. You got a one and five versus one and six team. Uh, you know, as far as their recent trends are concerned, and Florida, I mean, their backbones, their defense right now, and that's not looking great. So I think the over is a good play in that one. The Islanders have just been looking horrendous defensively. So I do like that over in that one. You know, as far as the price is concerned in this one here, guys. Sometimes, you know, Brian, I, I was mentioning you yesterday. I'm not sure if you caught the show, but, you know, we talk about puck luck. We talk about, you know, kind of just the way things happen, right? Just, just, it's just how things go in hockey sometimes and you just can't explain it. And Washington's goal differential on the season and for them to be battling for a playoff spot, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's, you can't explain it, but they're just finding a way. So it's kind of like, you know, we were talking about yesterday. The reason why I brought you up, Brian, was because Ottawa won two games in a row that they had no business winning. Like, absolutely no. I think it was like New Jersey and Edmonton. Like, you look at the expected goals, the stats. And Washington, sure, they're still having some good performances. But I, I will add that, you know, they're they're probably playing similar to they, how they did earlier in the year. They're just finally scoring. You know, who knew Connor McMichael could score goals? You know, I didn't know that Strom had this capability of goal scoring to him. And sure, they're getting a little bit more defensive uh, play. But at the same time, I didn't know Washington had this in them. I really didn't. But, you know, guys, I've been burnt a lot uh, in my NHL handicapping career, you know, trying to just get in front of hot teams and trying to figure out when is the best time to slow them down. And, you know, we always hear people talk about trying to catch a falling knife, but how about, you know, trying to get in front of a moving car area? What's the other way to, what's the other way to talk about this here? I mean, Washington's hot. I don't want to try and get in front of them. So you want to try and find a way to bet on them here. And the way I'd like to look at it is just by looking at their team total in this one. And I understand here, guys, that I can get a plus price backing them on the money line. So people would look to me and say, well, you know, you're getting plus 150. Why would you not want to look right now at that number? But for me, I can get minus 135 over two and a half goals for this Capitals team. They're scoring consistently. Their power play is looking much better. And they're playing a Maple Leafs team that I think has been relatively inconsistent as far as their defensive play. So I'm going to take a look at the team total. Over. Maybe I should do a split bet, you know, half bet money line, half bet on the team total. But I'm asking the Washington Capitals to get me to three goals. I believe they can do that here on a Thursday night in downtown Toronto. Uh, really quick, uh, before I throw it back to Carmine, we got a uh, question here from Mr. Big Chess. Uh, he's tuning in live here. Of course, we've got uh, YouTube Shorts live. We've got Instagram live. We've got YouTube. We've got Facebook. We are everywhere right now on the Wager Talk TV networks. And he's mentioning right now, asking us about the Montreal Canadiens and Flyers game. He wants our take. Well, um, I'll be covering this game in the best bet segment. So really quick, I'll go around the horn. We'll start with Carmen, go to Brian. Any quick thoughts for you guys uh, for Mr. Big Chest? What a username on the Flyers and Canadians game. Carmen, we'll start with you. Uh, um, I, and I'll give my opinion on the Toronto game because I've got some good uh, or some news for you as far as that oh, game I'm goes. I'm sorry, Carm. But uh, I thought you went. I'm I, sorry. I, it's okay. It's okay. Well, it, it, I, I get it, Andrew. Don't worry about it. it. It's all good. I'm easy. I'm an easy guy to forget about. Um, with that, with that said, 
Uh, I'm always going to fade the free team on the, you know, or the free space on the bingo card, the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, sure. They, they just beat Colorado. Are they going to follow up with another win against a playoff bound team like Philadelphia? No, nope. not going to happen. Uh, the broad street bullies push them around tonight to get the points. That's all that matters. Mr. Big chest. We appreciate that comment from you, Brian. What about you? I really don't have an opinion on it. Um, I've had bad luck with Montreal. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't play him against Colorado, uh, so I'll be sitting that one out. So I don't have anything to add, unfortunately. The Broad Street Bullies. I mean, look, two wins. They could beat Seattle and they beat Colorado. Road trip, first game back. Situation's pretty horrible. We'll leave it at that, but I have a play in the best bet segment to get to. Carm, uh, I didn't know you didn't talk about the game, and that's my bad. Uh, what do you have to say about this one? Usually you have a pretty good read on these uh, these Leafs games here. What do you think? So, uh, you know, here's the thing with the Leafs right now. Uh, They know they're going to make the playoffs. Uh, Tampa Bay is right on their heels. Uh, Do the Leafs want to finish third in that division? Because, excuse me, they're not going to finish second. So they're either going to face the Bruins or they're going to face the Florida Panthers in the first round. Unless um, they continue to drop games and Tampa takes over that third spot, then the Leafs fall to the seventh or eighth wildcard spot, likely the seventh wildcard spot, and it's going to put them in line to play a team like either the Rangers or whoever finishes first in the uh, uh, in the Atlantic Conference. Um, Mitch Marner, uh, ankle injury, uh, hasn't played, I think, it's six or seven games. Um, if he's not on the ice this morning, and I haven't seen any reports as of yet, um, it, it's troublesome because it's one of those ones where they hold him out. He's going to have to play a few games at some point before the playoffs start. You can't just activate him uh, or put him into the lineup for the playoffs because you got to think about the lines. You got to think about the power play. He needs to get back into sync with this team. What's the other problem? Austin Matthews, game time decision tonight, an illness. There's a very good chance Austin Matthews does not play tonight. And now you've got Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews out of the lineup tonight. If you see that line sinking, if you want Washington, you got to take them now because you're going to get plus 145, plus 150. If Matthews is a game time decision and does not play tonight, the Leafs are going to drop to about 150. You're only going to get about 115, 120 on Washington. You're losing money. If you want to take Washington, you take them now. The guy's a game time decision in a game in which I have to say it doesn't really matter to the Leafs at this point, other than trying to get back into sync. But if you got two of your biggest players on the sidelines in the press box watching this game, uh, it doesn't bode well, especially against a team that's playing hungry hockey like the Washington Capitals. So I want to mention that. And with that said, um, I would likely take the uh, I would take the Washington Capitals if you can get them now at plus one forty five. Great info there, Carm. That is great info. And the fact that Mitch Marner hasn't been around and then, like you said, that he might not play much before the playoffs. Sure, it's good to get healthy, but you need to get those reps. You need to get out there, build that chemistry up again before the playoffs. But uh, I I don't know if you guys watch the TNT broadcast very much, but uh, Paul Bizanet, I always get a kick out of Biz watching him on different shows and podcasts. Okay, so we seem to have lost Andrew again. He's frozen up. Uh, he's, maybe he lives in Nunavut. In, he's back. Oh, we got him got back. Anyway, Andrew's back he's, in Nunavut where the temperatures drop to minus 30. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, geez. Bad, bad day for me. with the, Anyway, he said that he thinks the Maple Leafs uh, are better off uh, sliding in the standings. We'll, we'll find out, but... Uh, Maybe they're better off not not playing because uh, they're not going to play uh, Boston now. Probably they're going to play Florida, and if they slide even more, they're going to play Carolina or or New York. So anyway, that would be crazy if they end up being a wild card team. Uh, we've got uh, qu- an Instagram question here uh, in the Instagram chat room: Rangers and Colorado. Uh, looking at the under here, you know, I, I'll say I'll say this real quick. We'll get your guys' thoughts, and then we'll go to our next game. But um, got to make sure we show some love to the Instagram chat room here. Um, I don't like betting unders after the Colorado went under. I mean, the Colorado Avalanche were just held to one goal, guys. Uh, do we really want to bet an under in a game after that happened, Brian? Well, any quick thoughts here for the uh, commenter? No. Unfortunately, we've got a big card today, 
and I didn't like a lot on it. There was some good spots that I wanted to play a certain team against another team, but they haven't worked out for me. So that one I made the line about right where the line is, so no advantage for myself. Carm? Listen, it's the Rangers, Andrew. I, I get it. They lost to the Canadians. Uh, you can't be happy about losing to the Canadians. But the Rangers uh, are playing some phenomenal hockey. And uh, I believe the Rangers beat them earlier this year by a 2-1 score in New York, a game that went to overtime. So uh, it, it's the thing of the, the Rangers have a, a type of a team that can shut you down. Uh, their defense, their goaltending, if it's just Sturkin in goal as opposed to uh, Quick. But even with Quick, not that big a drop off. Um, they want to clog up that neutral zone and stop those uh, uh, McKinnon uh, skates through where he dances through uh, center ice and uh, and they get that O zone quite easily. The Rangers can shut that down. Uh, they have that type of team. They're a team that's built, at least this year, I think, the way they're playing, uh, to make a good and long playoff run. Um, I get the price on Colorado because they're off a loss. But we've seen good teams lose a couple in a row, three in a row. And look at the Florida Panthers. It happens. Every time you think there's no way this team can lose another game, they're a very good team. They're top of the standings. Boom. They lose a game. This is probably one where I want to take the plus money. Guys, we are taking your questions live here on Puck Time. You can find us on YouTube Shorts Live, YouTube Live, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. We are available here, the Wager Talk TV network. Uh, thanks for being here with us. Hit the like button wherever you're watching right now. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel right here on Wager Talk TV. Let's uh, keep things moving along, get to our third game of the night. We're going to talk Vegas Golden Knights and Winnipeg Jets here, Carm. What are your thoughts on that matchup? All right. This is going to be interesting because I'm sure Brian Leonard's going to come after me on this one. <laughs> I get the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, that that game against uh, Nashville. Uh, Mark, I, I, I mentioned it. Marco D'Angelo, love the guy. His wife, uh, Lori, fantastic. They go to the game. It was a delayed gift for her. He took her to Nashville to watch the game. 3-0 for uh, for the Golden Knights. They're looking good. And then the Preds. Guys, uh, I'm happy about the fact that I got the better of Prez on this one. Prez is like, there's no way Nashville can uh, make the playoffs this year. They just can't score. There's nothing. I said, let them. They're, they are building a team there. They are a good team, and they will make the playoffs. And lo and behold, uh 18 games, 18 games in a row for Nashville without a point, uh, with a point. But with that said, listen, Winnipeg played a very good game against the Edmonton Oilers, uh, much better than they did those two previous games on the road. Second game back at home. They get the Knights coming in tonight uh, off of that loss as well, too. And this is one in which uh, Vegas got a little bit of space uh, by winning some games to get into uh uh, I put a little bit of space, I'm sorry, in that playoff race for the wild card spot. Uh, Winnipeg turns it around tonight, minus 130, uh, the Winnipeg Jets for me tonight. Um, to use the old football term, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. It's the Jets. <laughs> Brian? Uh, Andrew, I don't think, was here when we were talking about this last week or the last couple of weeks, but we we're talking about Vegas's chance to make the playoffs. And at one point they were plus 700 to make the playoffs. And I thought that was a pretty good bet. Well, thank God I didn't bet that. I couldn't find the number. So uh, once they, once they had lost the next one, uh, but um, yeah, now I see their 99% chance to make the playoffs. So if you are willing to lay that 16 to one, you're going to cash that bet, which is going to do most of the time anyway, 16 to one, but yeah, this is a disappointing situation for myself because I I want to play on both these teams, to be honest with you. Uh, the Golden Knights have won 9 to 10 in this series. They've dominated the Jets. Um, they've done so well against this division overall uh, since their inception. But they're off a game, as you mentioned, that twice they had a three-goal lead and lost it. And you mentioned Marco at the game with his wife, and I'm sitting here watching the game with my wife. Neither one of us could tell our wives that we had bet against the local team. And so the whole time I'm thinking, well, at least my wife's happy, you know, I'm gonna lose this bet, but you know, whatever. 
And then they make the comeback, and I'm starting to text Marco, and I go, we're alive. We're still alive here. And as soon as they made that uh, decision to challenge, I when it was made it to six, to 42, I turned to my wife. I said, they better win this challenge because they're going to have a power play if it doesn't happen. Sure enough, well, it was 10 seconds into the power play. We got a tie game. So um, really big mood, mood swings in that game. But as I said, the Knights are 1-9-10 in this series. Uh, they won 5-6 in Winnipeg, winning by a combined margin of nine goals. Uh, after a prolonged slump, Vegas is starting to put it all together. You can tell by the way they're playing a lot crisper offensively, and the defense is, is doing a pretty good job. Over the last 10 games, five-on-five five player, the Knights have a 53.49 goal share. Expected goals, 55.88, so they're playing very well. Winnipeg, during that same time frame, 53.66 so goal share, 50.78 expected goals. They enter play off three straight losses, each by three goals, and this is their second of five straight games at home for the Jets. So you've got to think this, the Jets have got to come out with a great effort tonight. I know they're, they're far ahead of uh, the Knights in the standings, but still, you don't want to uh, back into the playoffs, and that's what the Jets are doing right now. This is a third row game in four days for the visitor, and they're also playing their fourth game in six nights. Uh, both teams are in good spots, but we are concerned about the lack of rest for the Knights here. I prefer the Vegas side, but I was hoping to get a better line here. Um, both these teams are going to get it for a really good effort here. Problem is, Vegas may be a little bit tired with all this excitement. When After they knocked off St. Louis, that was a key game for them. That put them up pretty much uh, to the point where St. Louis wasn't going to catch them. Thought they'd have the letdown last game, but they started off as we mentioned three and zero to start that game. That was a major surprise. So I think that I think they bounce back here, but um, not going to lay it. Lean Vegas, but uh, not enough to play. So I'll root for you in the Jets. All right. All right. I. I uh... I like that, Brian. And and you're right. Uh, a six point gap now between the Blues in ninth and uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, ten games. I think it's ten games left for both both teams right now. So, you know, the hope is, you know, for you know, for teams like Vegas, um, they're just happy getting into OT. I think at this point, because every point gained just puts another nail in the coffin of the St. Louis Blues. The Blues definitely need to win this one against Calgary, and they have a bit of a favorable schedule. You know, they play the Sharks after that. Then they have to play the the next couple are t- are tough ones because they'll play uh, the Edmonton Oilers and the Nashville Predators. But then you know they've got the Sharks again, the Anaheim Ducks, the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, the uh, the Hurricanes, and then finish with the Kraken and Dallas. And Dallas can that's the final game of the season. They could have things sewn up by then. Uh, it's a good schedule. But making up six points is so tough right now because, again, those OT points mean so much at this uh, at, uh, at this uh, point of the playoff race. Would you uh, agree, Andrew? Definitely. I mean, you hear fan bases complaining every day now, uh, and you never hear people complain at the start of the season. It's only the end of the season where they're saying, oh, I'm getting tired of these overtime loss points. I'm getting tired of these participation points, right? Uh, but if it's their team, they don't complain. But if it's another team that's getting these points for overtime losses, you know, they're complaining about them and and looking at it that way. So, you know, to me, I think it still is important to to finish the season strong. As Brian mentioned, Winnipeg has some leverage. They have some points behind them, but you don't want to limp into the playoffs. I mean, you don't want to just you know, look like a wounded man just walking your way into the playoffs. It's never a good thing, you know, and and, you know, people are worried about that with uh, some of the teams with NCAA basketball right now. You know, if you're on a hot streak going into the into the big dance, are you going to be able to maintain that? Well, that's a theory that's been kind of proven to be wrong because a lot of those teams coming in hot, they stay hot. So it's like what you've been talking about lately about Tampa Bay, Carm. They're getting hot at the right time. And you don't want to get cold at the, at the wrong time like the Winnipeg Jets are right now. And one thing about this Jets team that I have always uh, respected about them is their bounce back ability. And I know that's not really a, a handicapping tool we can use for every team. You know, every team is not going to be able to just bounce back. But this is a team after an embarrassing loss you could usually look to to get a good performance out of them. Two bad losses in a row definitely could look to get a good effort out of them, but they have not looked great recently. They certainly haven't. But what I like about this one here 
is that you've got a team that blew a lead going up against a team that was down and almost completed a comeback. So to me, it's two different situations because Winnipeg was down against Edmonton. They had to crawl back into that game, build some momentum. I'm always a believer that even if you do not win that game, and they still got the point out of it, you build momentum for your next game. Some people will tell you there's there's no difference in losing a game 5-1 or 5-4. A coach will tell you there's a big difference. And the difference is, is how you perform going to the next game because the momentum you're able to build, you know, sometimes you're down in the dumps, you, you know, you, you have no belief, but if you are able to even almost string that comeback together and I get it, Vegas won't be happy either, but like we can't sit here. I, I don't think we can sit here. Any of us and say that Vegas is the more motivated team right now. Sure. They blew a lead. It was, it was really bad, but Winnipeg is certainly motivated going into this game. So I'm on the Jets here, guys. J-E-T-S. Let's go Jets and uh, see if they can get it going, especially at home. Brian mentioned the home stand there. They got to get it going at home. It's going to be the sea of the whiteout. Isn't it, Carm, the, the big whiteout in Winnipeg? I've, I've always wanted to go to Winnipeg, actually, for a playoff game. The, the atmosphere looks awesome. I got Winnipeg and Nashville on my bucket list there for, for an NHL playoff game. It looks pretty two completely different places. That's for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, those are two places on my playoff bucket list. One more question to throw at you guys I'm before Brian, the, Brian, the best hold on. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Hold, hold on, Andrew. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Andrew. Brian, did he just say, I've always wanted to go to Winnipeg. It's like <laughs> for a game for a game. I, I don't get it. It's, Said no one ever. I'm sorry, you people in Winnipeg, but I can stand at well, one part of Winnipeg and see the end of Winnipeg because I, I don't think there's anything there other than the, you know, a few condo high rises, the arena, uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers Stadium. Um, what else is there in Winnipeg? Is there what what is there to do in Winnipeg? I, I did I did want to point out that he mentioned his bucket list was wanting to see a game there a playoff game there. He's a young guy. His bucket list should be wanting to see a playoff game in Montreal. <laughs> yeah. That's true, but playoff game you know, I can, I can drive there, Brian, you know, it's a little, it's a little bit different, I guess, but you're right. That's going to be a lot longer. <laughs> it's it's going to be a lot longer. Of a time. You know, I, I don't want to Andrew, Andrew, I don't want to go off on tangents, but the one thing, whenever Prez, uh, we're at a poker tournament or we're watching a game and he drives me nuts with this stupid, his thing of, well, the Toronto Maple Leafs have the second most Stanley Cups of any team in the NHL. And I always ask him, uh, how many Stanley Cups have the Leafs won in a league that had more than six teams? And yeah. it shuts them right up. It shuts them up because the answer is zero. Uh, it, it's pretty easy to win a Stanley Cup when there's only six teams in the league and you're one of them. Um, you know, the math says you're going to win some cups. But anyways, with that said, Andrew, uh, what was the question you had for us? I might actually have to cheer for the Leafs this year. I feel that bad for them. All right, guys, we got one question here. This is from Silas the Virus. We've got, are the Blues a good bet today, fellas? Uh, thinks this game is a T-R-A-P trap. Well, look, they're playing the Flames, and the Flames just lost to the Blackhawks. So, I mean, you'd think you're going to get some type of effort out of the Flames tonight, but the Blues have been playing some inspired hockey. What do you guys think here? I mean, this is a Flames team you can't trust. You're trying to bet against them at all spots available, but if there's ever a time to be embarrassed and give a good effort, you'd think it would be tonight, guys. I, I don't know. Brian, what do you think? I wanted to play the Blues. There were two reasons why I did. Number one, I didn't think the line showed much value. Secondly, after losing to the to uh, Vegas the other day, and the way that one turned out, that was a heartbreaker, and that could have taken them out of the playoff race. So, you would expect a good effort from them. I still think St. Louis wins, but you've got to be able to pick your spots, and you've got to be able to know what your strike numbers are. And um, it's a little bit too high for me. If, if it uh, if it somehow goes down, uh, I might be interested. But as of right now, just to lean with St. Louis. Real quick, I think I would take the under in this game. Uh, I'd stay away from the side. I, I don't trust Calgary's offense, but I do think they'll get a better defensive effort tonight. Carm, what do you think? 
Yeah, I love the question from him. And, you know, I, I echoed it in the uh, chat a little while ago. Uh, uh, Dave, uh, David Welding had asked about the game. And the, the price just seems odd to me, just because the, at least the Blues are playing competitive hockey. They're six points out. It's a game in which they need to win. But again, must win doesn't mean you're going to win. I hate to sound like a broken record, but that's what it is. And then you look at this this uh, this Calgary team. They've scored, what, four goals in the last four games. The scoring has dried up. Uh, and then for some reason, once you hit the road, some teams just play differently. And would it surprise me if Calgary went into St. Louis and beat them tonight? It, it wouldn't. Uh, I, I'm staying off the game, but the Blues have won both games thus far uh, against the Flames, both of them in Calgary. Uh, we'll see if they make it three tonight. I'm cheering for the Blues to win tonight. It's not on my card. I'm not betting the game, but I am cheering for the Blues to win tonight to at least make some of these games down the stretch meaningful games for themselves and the Vegas Golden Knights. Awesome stuff. And shout out to Joe Ranieri for passing out, uh, passing the questions along for me. And shout out to everybody uh, tuning in uh, live right now across multiple different platforms. So you can find us here on Wager Talk TV. Let's jump into best bets. Uh, as the NHL does it, they, uh, they, they had, you know, not much going on yesterday, right, guys? A pretty quiet night across all kinds of sports, you know. But the, M the NHL was like, no, no, we're going to schedule two games. And then March Madness returns, MLB opening day, a couple NBA games. This is the night NHL wants to pack their slate. They're just so clueless. But uh, lots lots to choose from for the best bet selection here, Brian. What do you have for us tonight? Yeah, I want to take a look at uh, a game that I did find value in. In fact, the more I look at this game, I think I'm going to add this to my client list for today. Uh, so we'll end up with two plays in the NHL. I'm going to take a look at Chicago at Ottawa. And I know Carmine just made fun of Chicago, but this is a team playing pretty well right now. They've done actually very well ever since Bedard came back from his injury. Uh, Blackhawks have dominated this series, believe it or not. They've won seven straight games in this series, outscoring the Senators 34-18. to 18. Both teams have put up solid 6-4 and four records in the last 10 contests. Uh, during that time on 5-5 five and five play, Chicago has a goal share of 39.53, expected goals of 46.14. The Senators during that same time, 43.59 goal share, 50.08 expected goals. Uh, Chicago enters playoff back-to-back -back wins, but they did come against San Jose and Calgary, or Ottawa's won three straight over New Jersey, Edmonton, and Buffalo. But as you pointed out, um, they were a little fortunate in those games. When you take a look at the expected goals, they did not um, dominate those games, and that's something that you really should look at because you just can't look at wins and losses if you none of us has the time to watch every single game so we've got to go back and look at the expected goals and so auto has been a team who has been winning but they haven't been doing so impressively and they've been getting a little bit lucky there's no way ottawa should be favored in this price range i like chicago i'm not only going to you know think about putting on playing that plus the one and a half i'm going to play them on the money line here I think there's value on Chicago. Ottawa's a team, even though the record shows they're playing a little bit better, as we've talked about it, this is a team not playing well right now. And Chicago's playing with a lot of heart. They got a young team. And I like young teams who start to play well. They gain confidence. And, and as I said about the series history, they won seven straight games. And they've done so by almost doubling their scores. So give me Chicago. Uh, I know it's a different team than it was the last seven years, but I like the way this team's playing right now good underdog spot right here for the uh for the blackhawks plus 165 the dogs barking tonight brian looking at the chicago blackhawks guys find all brian's plays wagertalk.com uh he has a march madness five percent big play uh going he's had a tremendous run uh in the ncaa best of luck brian uh great seeing you as always Carm, you are just keep on going with the NHL, man. It's been a great stretch for you here in the new year. What do you have going tonight for clients? What's your best bet today? Uh, first of all, Brian, that's a bold strategy on on Chicago. Uh, let's see how that works out for you, Cotton, <laughs> as they say, because uh, it's tough to take a team for me that is 6-29 and 29 on the road. Uh, and outscored by, uh, what is it, 78 goals. Um, but 
It is the Ottawa Senators, and they're playing. Ottawa's playing pond hockey right now. We saw it in Buffalo. We saw it the game before that. Uh, open ice. Maybe that's the type of game that Chicago wants to get into. Uh, and Ottawa's four, five, and two in the second of a uh, back to back. So we'll see how they, they do in that one. Andrew, um, five games up for me in the NHL tonight. One of them is this play that I'm going to give you guys um, as the show best bet. Huge card for me tonight. More games than I thought I would have, but I really like today's card. So let's pray this one goes well. I'm taking the Nashville Predators in uh, Arizona, but on the regulation line, minus 105 uh, is the regulation number here. 18 games in a row for the Nashville Predators where they have picked up at least a point. That is an unbelievable run. 16 of those wins, two of them OT losses. Of the 16 wins, 15 of them came in regulation time. I get it. The the Coyotes can surprise some teams, but uh, I don't want to get in front of this Nashville team right now. They're playing some extremely uh, solid hockey right now, and they are not taking anybody lightly. Give me the Nashville Predators minus 105 in regulation as your show free play. The Nashville Predators playing some great hockey right now. You got to love it, man. Ever since they weren't allowed to go to that U2 concert, uh, their coach has them playing some great hockey. Uh, shout out to Joey G's sister. Happy birthday uh, to her. Uh, guess you got birthday shout outs. We've got a million games being broken down. What a day here today on Puck Time. Uh, guys, I got a 4% rare play in the NBA tonight. Uh, looking forward to it off a team total NBA winner yesterday. Got a 4% play in the MLB. It is a team total. I was number two totals and team totals last year in the MLB plus 30 units. So join me today on that. Free play is posted as well uh, to my webpage. And I'm starting a new show today with Adam Trigger. It's called The Midday Grind. We are live streaming during the Orioles and Angels game. Come on. Uh, come on with us. Go in the live chat. Interact. We'll answer your questions. We're going to talk some baseball all summer long. My best bet for today's show, however, is going to be the over six Philadelphia Flyers, Montreal Canadiens. Look, guys, five game road trip. That's what Montreal is coming back from right now. They ended the road trip on a great note. And in fact, they played some good hockey against Edmonton, Vancouver as well, I would argue. But, you know, after those two good defensive efforts, a young team like this usually struggles their first game back at home. Philadelphia playing some good hockey right now. I believe they're going to come in, bring their depth, bring their toughness. They had some defensemen jumping in the rush, creating offense as well. This game to me should see fireworks. Let's go over six flyers and Habs and guys. Thanks so much for being here with us on puck time on behalf of Carmine.